Hello everyone, Ken here, back with the seventh and final part of the Data Science Project from Scratch series. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to set up a README for your data science project on GitHub. And I'm also gonna kind of highlight some of the things that you should make sure to check for to make sure your project really stands out and is clean and readable for anyone viewing it, be that a potential employer, uh, someone who's looking for reference, or anyone uh, along those lines. Before I actually get into the meat of this video, I wanted to first thank everyone who's made it this far. I This was a pretty big undertaking for me to, to put together, and it's gotten really great feedback to this point. So I, I'm happy everyone is, is liking these, this video series, and uh, hopefully I'll make more similar to it in the future. I also hope that, that this process really helped everyone out there understand what the true nature of a data science project is like. You know, these projects, you don't just sit down and do it in one go. They're extremely iterative. You make mistakes, you have to debug code, um, and it's okay to get stuck. I get stuck all the time, and you know, usually you work your way through it. You look at different resources. Um, you, you leverage all of the things that are out there, including other people's code. By getting stuck and by having to think around these problems and, and actually stare at the code for so, you know, for so long, you really do learn a lot. Even in this project, I learned a lot. I, I don't do too many kind of Flask API endpoints. And so that was a good learning experience for me. I also even learned a little bit in the Jupyter Notebook because I usually work in the Spider IDE. So again, you know, through this experience, even though it's more instructional, I am still learning myself. Okay, with that being said, let's kind of go into our GitHub repo here. And I'm gonna talk you through some of the things that I think are important when, I, when I'm looking at uh, one of these for a perspective hire. So let's just go to the general repo here. And we can see my code is, is kind of all over the place. If I were to go back through this, and I might actually still do it, uh, I'd organize some of these into different folders. Uh, for the actual readme, I included some pictures, and in order to get pictures in the readme, you have to put them into the actual repo. So maybe I'd make a separate folder for that as well. When we're looking at the actual code, you really want to see uh, some good comments in here. Again, for this, you know, I have, I have these that uh, I put in there, but I don't really have any other comments out there to describe what I'm doing. Uh, I should probably go back through and comment this code so everyone can follow along accordingly. Now, I think I did that a little bit better in some of the other notebooks. Let's look at like the, uh, the, the data cleaning one. Yeah, I mean, it looks like I have the salary parsing. I say what's involved in each one. Uh, but generally, you wanna be very explicit with your comments because if someone else is using your code, that's you know, the first thing that they're gonna look to to be able to understand what you're doing. Uh, you know, more so than, um, you know, less so than software engineering, you know, we're not expecting too many other people to use our code for our projects, but it's still a good practice to get into. Now, let's actually go into kind of understanding the readme, how someone would go in and look at this. The first thing that I like to include is a project overview. So, if I'm a recruiter, or not really a recruiter, if I'm a, a data science manager and I'm exploring your profile, the first thing I can see is like the entire um, outline of this project, everything that you did. So my first line here is I created a tool that estimates data science salaries with you know the mean. Uh, oh, it's mean absolute error. So let me let me fix that real quick. Um, still making changes. Okay, so with a mean absolute error of around $11,000 to help data scientists negotiate their income when they get a job. So it's clear the specific customer that I'm targeting with a analysis like this. It's you know, people who get a data science job and they wanna know, uh, they wanna be able to negotiate their salaries and get a good estimate of about what they should be paying. Obviously there are other things out there uh, that do this, but you know, we're, we, we wanted to build this from scratch and this is a very interesting use case, hopefully especially for my audience. Then we can go through kind of some of the things we did. So we scraped over a thousand job offers, uh, and job um, postings. Uh, we did some feature engineering. We used these three models and then we built an API using Flask. That is the whole project in basically one paragraph or in a couple bullets. 
I really recommend having something like this at the top of the README because it gives anyone just like a, a quick understanding of what you did. And again, the value creation that, you, that you're um, building from this or like the why you're creating this is very, very important. Next, you, you always wanna have what resources you used. So I obviously referenced uh, this repo and, and these two articles, but if someone else is going to recreate this, we wanna know what version it is, what uh, packages we used, and then you usually wanna include a requirements.txt file. Uh, I did that in the, um, in, the, um, in the Flask API tutorial portion. Um, in theory, I should have done that for the whole project, but because data science uses so many like large libraries, uh, you don't always have to include that. The requirements here are basically only for the Flask app, what you need. Uh, and so you can run this line of code pip install r requirements um, when you're in the project directory and it'll install all the requirements. That's something that's a good best practice to handle. I've also included my YouTube link um, for, for reference there. Obviously, if you don't have a YouTube link for your project, you do not have to include that. Um, the next thing is you really want to get an understanding of the data. So usually you would have like a tab that either says data or for this case, web scraping. So we, we have all of the, the values that we, that we used and I could even probably be more explicit and include like a, an array of all of the final variables that went into the model. I think that that wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, but that would take up a lot of space because since we use dummy variables, there were so many variables associated with it. So I'll also talk very briefly about what I did in the data cleaning. I just went through each of the steps and you know how we made those things relevant to us. So obviously, you know, parsing out from the job description was, was a pretty cool task. And I think that that was a feature engineering step that um, you know, might have seemed obvious to some people, but I think that that really added a lot to our um, to our model and to our understanding. Uh, and that is not like a, a basic feat of feature engineering. That's doing some text processing, which could look pretty good. The next thing that we evaluated here was the exploratory data analysis. And for this, I mean, it is a visual analysis. I probably could have gone even more in depth into some of the visuals that I made, but here I just wanted to bring in some of the actual, um, you know, pictures from the EDA that we did. So uh, I would also reference um, this markdown guide that I found. So I basically just reference all of this to get the styling, the formatting, to add pictures, etc. If you want a README um, you know, markdown help sheet, I'll, I'll link this in the description of the actual video. This was so helpful to me and I was able to put this together in you know, 15, 20 minutes. I wanted to do this before I actually um, made the video rather than doing it with you because I don't think it'd be super fun just to watch me type for like 25, 30 minutes. So uh, it's more interesting and hopefully more useful to be able to actually go through it here. So next we talk about our model building, you know, what type of models that we tried and, and why we tried them. So, you know, obviously we're using a multiple linear regression just to get the baseline. We're looking at the lasso regression because we thought a normalized model would, would make sense because of the sparsity of the data. And then we use a random force for the same reason. Uh, and it is a bit more of a powerful model usually, especially with a lot of the encoded variables that we used. Finally, we wanted to understand the model performance. And the, the important thing here is that we can see up here, um, you know, the model performance already. Like we're, our, our focus for uh, the exercise for the employers is about the results of the model. Um, but then we can obviously reiterate it and go into more depth down here. And then we talk a little bit about the productionization of this model using Flask. So I, I think that this is a pretty good outline to use for your projects. You know, this is something that, um, again, talks about everything up top, everything that would be relevant in a quick glance. But if someone wanted to go deeper, someone wanted to recreate this, they could go down through this and under, get a pretty good idea about what went on uh, throughout this whole process. Again, you know, my intention is not for you guys to recreate this exact project. It's just to show you the steps to actually uh, create a project that you go through. So you can use some similar scraping techniques, some similar analysis, but 
the projects that are unique to you are going to create the biggest impact on anyone looking at them. You know, I find that when I'm very interested in a project, when I'm very interested in the outcomes, personally, I do so much better and I have uh, a lot easier time actually explaining the whole methodology. You know, it's very subtle, but employers, anyone you're talking to can really see that, um, that come through if you're just truly invested in your own project. So I, I think that that's, that's really all uh, I wanted to get into for this. I can show you kind of the, the raw, what it looks like. So a lot of kind of formatting for bullets looks like that. Um, uh, same thing, uh, kind of bold is the double asterisks. You put pictures in by doing the links. Um, I have to think about if I wanna go through and clean this up even a little bit more uh, so that it is, it is really as useful as possible to you guys. Again, thank you so much for all of the positive feedback for you know, making this possible. You know, again, this took me a little longer than I thought, uh, but I'd like to do something similar to this again, uh, maybe with a, a sports model or something along those lines. But I'll need probably a, a couple months to recharge before I, you know, I pick up something uh, as big as this again. Uh, I, I hope that you guys can build uh, really cool projects like this, and they can help you to, you know, either get a job or, or really um, express yourself through the data here as much as possible. Again, thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.